Hi, my name is Darshan and I'm an online tutor of math and physics. Uh, this video is on um, question number four, FRQ4 AP Physics 1 2023 exam. Uh, after question number three, which I think is the easiest one, question fourth, uh, the current, que current question is the second uh, easiest question in this complete paper. Let's talk about that. Uh, so we are given that, that there is a block of unknown mass uh, which is attached to a long lightweight string that is wrapped several times around a pulley mounted on a horizontal axis towards center as shown okay so uh, this is the pivot or the axle this is a disc mass as m radius of r and this is a block which just hangs to it at yeah pulley, pulley is a uniform disc of mass m and radius r Rotational kinetic energy, sorry, rotational inertia of the pulley is also given to us as half mR square. Pulley can rotate about its center with negligible friction. However, the spring does not slip. So spring does not slip, uh, string does not slip means that there is considerable friction uh, and it allows it not to slip. Uh, on the pulley as the block falls, when the block is released from rest and as the block travels toward the ground, the magnitude of the tension exerted on the block by the string is Ft. So the block is falling down, the tension is F of t of course in this direction. Here it's going to be right in the opposite direction like this. They are saying that determine an expression for the magnitude of the angular acceleration alpha d. Remember angular acceleration because the pulley is rotating like this with alpha d and the system is going down with an acceleration of a which is not known to us. Uh, of the block as it travels downwards and we have to express our answer as m, r and ft and any physical constant. So this is completely about the Newton's law, you know, the equation of the force, force equations and uh, the torque equations. So the first things first, uh, we know that the mass, uh, okay, the mass of the block is not known to us. Okay, so I think this is, maybe the Newton's law may not be too much, too much helpful for us, but if we notice the pulley, this is the pulley and this is where the force is acting. So obviously this tension force is, is, the, is the force which is able to provide it the necessary torque, correct? Okay, and what will be the torque? We know that the value of the torque is R cross F. Fortunately here the R is definitely R, F is F, but the angle is 90. So cross product means sine 90 and sine 90 is just one. So the torque is just going to be capital R times F of T. Also the value of torque is given by I alpha. In this case, alpha is alpha D. And we already have the value of I, uh, of I which is half M R square alpha D. This is also torque. This is also torque. All we have to do is equate both of them. So that's going to look like half m r square alpha d is equal to r times f of t, r times f of t. Uh, this r and this r is gone and we are left with half m r alpha t is equal to f of t, which means that a little bit of cross multiplication and rearrangement will give, will give me the value of uh, <clears throat> alpha d as two times f of t divided by mr. So this is the value of the angular acceleration of the pulley, right? Okay, uh, in the next question, and this is the last question of this, part, this is the last part of this question. Here everything remains the same. So the scenario one is still that solid disk, the same moment of inertia half mr square, except for the point that the other other, uh, in the other scenario, the solid disk is represented, is replaced by a hoop. What is a hoop? Hoop is just a hollow disk. So it's like a ring. It's like a ring. Okay. Its mass is same and its radius is same. Uh, everything is same. The pulleys, uh, the friction is also negligible about the center on both the cases. Now in both the scenarios, the pulleys begin at rest. 
and then both the strings are pulled with the same force fa for the same time interval delta t so fa is applied for the same time interval delta t causing the pulleys to rotate without the string slipping after the time interval delta t, the change in angular momentum of the, of the disc is equal to the change in uh, angular momentum of the hoop. So change in angular momentum of both the elements is found to be same. But the change in rotational kinetic energy for the disc is greater than that of the hoop. This is the observation. Question is very straightforward that why this happens. So in a clear, coherent paragraph, lens response that may also contain equations and drawings explain why the change in the angular momentum of both the pulleys is the same, but the change in rotational kinetic energy is different. So the concept over here, the first concept over here we have to use is the angular impulse. We know that the angular impulse delta L is nothing but tau times delta T just like the linear momentum or linear impulse is f times delta t, the angular momentum, the change in the angular momentum is tau times delta t. Delta t for both is same. And what is tau? What is the torque? Torque is just fa, which is both, which is same in both the cases, multiplied with the distance. And the radius of both the cases is same, right? So the torque is going to be F A times R. Why times R? Because the angle is 90, so sine 90 is 1. So we don't bother about the sine of the angle. So can we say that in both the cases, the change in angular momentum has the same value, uh, which is F A times R times delta T. And that is the reason why their angular momentum remains same. Okay. Initial angular momentum is zero, right? So right now we have answered the part one that why the angular momentum is same. Right now, uh, now I'm moving to why the kinetic energy is different. Now we already know that the initial angular momentum is zero, of course. So Li is zero. And delta L is nothing but LF minus Li, L final minus L initial. L initial is zero. So can we say that L final is actually the angular momentum, the change is equal to the final one. And don't you think that we also know uh, of a formula for the angular momentum that angular momentum is i omega, right? Just like torque is i alpha, angular momentum is i omega. So we know that the angular momentum for both is same because the change of both is same and change is equal to final. So final momentum of both the uh, both the both these parties are same. So L F of solid disk should be equal to LF of hoop and L is I omega. So can we say that I1 omega 1 is equal to I2 omega 2? Okay. So can we say that I1 over I2 is equal to, uh, all right, let, let's actually keep it like this. Let's actually keep it like this. If required, we'll manipulate further. Let's keep it and mark it as equation number one. Now, what is the kinetic energy of the uh, initial one? What is the kinetic energy, angular, uh, kin angular kinetic energy, sorry, rotational kinetic energy uh, of the uh, of the disk? So I will say that uh, the rotational kinetic energy of the disk is going to be I1 omega 1 square divided by 2. Correct, that's the formula. Rotational kinetic energy of the hoop is given by I2 omega 2 square divided by 2. I'm going to manipulate this a little bit. Can I write it like this? I1 omega 1. This is going to be I1 omega 1 times omega 1 over 2. In fact, over 2 is over here. And this can be written as I2 omega 2 over 2 times omega 2. It's just a manipulation. Why am I doing that? Because this I1 omega 1 and this I2 omega. Okay, let's do away with the square thing. I put a square over here. This I1 omega 1 and this I2 omega 2 are basically same, right? From equation number 1. So we are only interested to compare the value of omega 1 and omega 2. If we can compare omega 1 and omega 2, then we can justify that why the first one has a greater 
Can I take an MG then the second one? I'm gonna make some space for myself. I think we are pretty much through with the green stuff. So I'm gonna erase this. And now I'm going to compare the moment of inertia. For this one, it's given as half m half mr square, and for a solid uh, for a hoop, the moment of inertia is very straightforward because all the mass is over here, which is at a distance of r. In fact, that's a pretty popular formula as well that the moment of inertia is mr square. So we very well know that the value of i1 and i2, the value of i2 is more than i1. Correct. So from this equation, from this equation, can we actually say that since i2 is more than i1 and if we rearrange the, the equation which I just circled, I, this can be written as omega 1 over omega 2 is equal to i2 over i1, correct? Since i2 is already greater than i1, so here the numerator is more than denominator and since the equation is uh, this since this is an equation so same should follow for the left side as well so omega 1 should be greater than omega 2 and isn't that what we wanted to prove that if omega 1 is greater than omega 2 obviously the rotational kinetic energy of the hoop sorry of the disc should be greater than the rotational kinetic energy of the hoop this is what we have to prove so we proved this using obviously the moment of inertia and comparing their uh, angular momentum as well i hope uh, this video makes sense if this video was helpful please subscribe to my channel bye bye <music>